Art and creativity influences our daily life. TV, advertising, the news, paintings, music and cars are essential elements of our existence. These are just some of the fundamental aspects of our life ingrained into what makes us who we are. Our opinions, our morals, our values are all shaped by what we consume. But the dreams we're fed of becoming doctors, lawyers and teachers is just not what the world's made of. Growing up, we're sat in lessons in this ongoing cycle of not being able to allow ourselves to ultimately express our form of life within us through the arts. But the world's your oyster, right? That's what they tell us until a look of misunderstanding of your little childish dream turns into a judgment of how your existence brings nothing to society. Yet, the industry thrives on using artists to help create and develop their vision. There's no complaints then, but what would they do if we didn't have the arts? This is what allows us to escape from the real world. <laughs> okay, so my mum does fashion design, my grandma loves to sew, and my sister also did fashion design, so I was kind of following in their footsteps when choosing the subject. And then, I, but I wasn't like in love with it until I guess movies. I think like The Hunger Games in particular, like when her dress like transformed into the Mockingjay. I was like, wow, like I want to make something like that. That's when I really fell in love with fashion design. I remember like at school we had like careers advisors. I remember she was telling me like, oh you don't stand a chance in fashion, you should think about pursuing something else. I remember I was like, I came back home and I was like crying to my sisters like, I don't know what to say and I thought if she said that. And then I got this like brochure from this college about a fashion design course and I was like this is what I want to do, like this is where I want to go. I'm a speaking. Your dream, your desire, and your eagerness to be in the creative industry is not just a childish dream. Your aspiration is just as important as another's. A creative path doesn't determine your academic ability, nor does it hinder your potential of succeeding in life. It's incredibly important that we all as a society recognize that success is subjective to one another. What brings one happiness may be their form of success. Now take that as I welcome childish dreams to you. You'll take in the experiences of three artistic individuals in industry to break apart this stigma and ultimately what following that dream can bring to your sense of self. When I was younger, I wanted to be a tattoo artist. I went to like a wild school, like council estate, typical, everyone told me in. I was like really troubled, so I was diagnosed with autism and ADHD when I was in school and my school did nothing to help me, they did everything they could to antagonise me to try and get me kicked out until I was in year 9 um, and then I went to an alternative school where I found like, my interest in art and it wasn't like, it wasn't like maths English, obviously it was maths and English but instead of doing like PE running around the field, we'd go rock climbing if I wanted to do art, we'd go out to the museum for the day and I'd like draw stuff. And I got to just explore more than just academic professions. Um, and my teacher, my personal teacher at that centre, was the one who like, looked into tattooing for me, but I injured my wrist. So I realised that I couldn't be a tattoo artist, but I had like, an obsession with horror movies, all the gore, the fake legs, the fake fingers, like, the throat being cut, all blood spurting everywhere. And I was all raw, how is this made? When I was growing up in Lithuania, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, uh, but I sure as hell wanted to be a creative. And I was sort of exposed to art, and my granddad was uh, making sculptures from wood, and he was a painter, so I was really fascinated by his work and my grandma had a sewing machine so she would make clothes for herself and in Lithuania uh, when my parents were younger especially uh, we were in the Soviet Union meaning we were 
deprived with certain uh, things like clothes even. Everything was rationalized. Um, so a lot of women were making their own clothes. And so that's why my, my grandma was sewing and my mom was knitting. So she would, she would make everything from jumpers to dresses. Um, so I was exposed to that and probably subconsciously I followed it. And when I decided to become a fashion stylist, I wouldn't particularly say that my parents were super happy about it. Um, but they didn't say no and I followed this because this was my dream and I'm very passionate about it and I cannot imagine myself anywhere else. I would say like I didn't see a lot of people who look like myself in the industry as fashion designers. Um, I guess like until like later on with like Virgil Abloh and like what Kanye West and like Pharrell are doing, like until then. But beforehand no, I didn't see anyone, but I didn't see that as something which held me back and made me feel like, oh, like, I could do something different, like, from where I'm from, because I have a different perspective than everybody else. I think at school, my school was pretty diverse, but my college wasn't at all. I was the only black girl in my class. And I didn't, but I didn't feel like, oh, no, I can't do it, because that I made, it did make me work harder, and I felt like I really had something to prove, for sure. And, like, now at uni, I'm the only black girl now doing GFW Graduate Fashion Week. And it doesn't it makes me like happy and like the other black girls in my class who didn't get through, they were like, oh like you gotta do this for us, like represent. I'm like, oh I'm like, I will. Yeah. I would say for anyone with or without a support system, is that the only person you've got to please is yourself. You've got to be your own worst critic and you've got to be your own biggest supporter. Like you can't rely on others because then you can't please anyone. You have to just focus on making yourself happy, like satisfying what you do. And like you have to have thick skin, because everybody has an opinion. Everybody wants to share their opinion, unfortunately. So you gotta just, you know, believe in yourself and you gotta be able to just handle it. Um, so I am mixed race. My dad's Irish and my mum is Jamaican. I grew up with my mum, so I grew up in a predominantly black household, which I think is quite clear to a lot of people that I know that I'm you know, identified more to the black side. But coming into this industry, I realised white girls kind of look at you like unsure if you know how to do white girl makeup. Because obviously I'm not a dark skinned girl. Dark skinned girls, understandably because they have been failed in this industry, are reluctant because they're like, you're light skin, I don't think you're gonna understand how to work my skin. But I'm very happy, and fingers crossed no one comes out and says, she's a lawyer. I think I've done very well in advocating for black women, in doing black women's makeup. Um, I'm quite known in Brum as being a black makeup artist. And I think it's really important to have representation, no matter what. And um, considering I grew up with my mum, a dark skinned woman, that's who I practiced all my makeup on, that's who I, who I got into it with. I used to be obsessed with going into her makeup and smothering it all on my face and trying to say that I haven't thought. Um, completely different skin complexion to us, so it's kind of obvious. But I practiced on a dark skinned woman, like that's what I actually know. I'm more comfortable with a black girl than a white girl, and a lot of other people, especially in this, in this industry, would feel the opposite way round. So I think that's really important, and I think people underestimate, underestimate yeah, a lot just because of your skin complexion. And look, I know there's not enough represent representation of Muslim girls, not enough representation of dark skinned girls, and I think it's a travesty to be honest. Fuck everyone. Fuck everyone. If, if someone says, nah, you shouldn't do that, you can't do that, go and show them that you can do it. Go and show them, no, it's not, there's no question about it, you can do it if you want to, and if you want to do it, go and do it. Don't let anyone else tell you you can't do something, because who are they to tell you? No one. Absolutely no one. When you grow up, no one was really talking about fashion as a actual serious career choice. I I would hear that oh yeah it's a hobby. It's you're not serious. It's not a job. You're not getting money out of it, which is so not true. But I believe this for quite a while myself 
up until I started working in fashion and realized there is so many opportunities here. So I would say that a lot of people will have opinions, a lot of people will have negative opinions and they come out of a place of fear and lack of knowledge. So if you're really passionate about something, just educate yourself 